Welcome to webinar number six. I am Dr. Julie Rodman. In this webinar, I will be discussing abnormalities of the retinal pigment epithelium and choroid. You may recall this slide from previous webinars. On this slide, I have delineated the various layers of the retina and choroid. The orange arrow is pointing to the area on OCT that we will be emphasizing in this video. Let's start with the topic of drusen. Drusen are focal yellow or white deposits of extracellular debris located between the retinal pigment epithelium and Brooks membrane. They occur naturally with age and usually do not cause symptoms. Drusen may range in appearance, size, and location. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see an OCT depicting hard drusen. Hard drusen are small with distinct margins. As you can see, hard drusen are barely visible on OCT. However, they can become confluent and result in RP changes that can lead to exudation. On the left-hand side, you can see what soft drusen look like on an OCT. Soft drusen are larger, dome-like elevations that are irregular in shape with indistinct margins. This slide shows another type of drusen, cuticular drusen. Cuticular drusen have a sawtooth elevation of the RPE with rippling of the overlying ISOS junction and external limiting membrane. A fun fact, cuticular drusen may look like hard drusen, but they behave more like soft drusen and thus can progress to AMD. You can see the white arrows here pointing to these little sawtooth elevations and a more dramatic presentation on this OCT. This next slide demonstrates reticular drusen another type of drusen that differs from the previous types because it resides in the subretinal space and are thus called reticular pseudodrusen. They can be confused with drusen, but they're actually a clinically distinct entity located above the RPE. The deposition presents as a hyperreflective material between the RPE and the ISOS junction. Reticular pseudodrusen are associated with progression to advanced AMD. Thus, it's important to be able to recognize them on your OCT scan. OCT has taken on an instrumental role in the grading of AMD. We use the structural changes seen on OCT to categorize AMD into early, intermediate, and advanced stages. This slide shows what small drusen would look like on an OCT. Small drusen are described as 63 microns in diameter or less. This next slide shows a combination of intermediate sized drusen and large drusen. Intermediate drusen are 63 to 125 microns in size, whereas large drusen are 125 microns or greater. The advanced stages of AMD include geographic atrophy and choroidal neovascular membrane. Let's first look at geographic atrophy. With geographic atrophy, you can see well-defined areas of hypopigmentation of the RPE with loss of the outer nuclear layer, photoreceptors, and RPE in the area of geographic atrophy. This will result in overall thinning of the neurosensory retina and loss of the choriocapillaris. Due to the increased signal below the RPE, you will see a hypertransmission defect in the choroid. On the right-hand side of the scan, the blue arrow is pointing to the area of geographic atrophy with underlying hypertransmission defect. The picture on the left, the orange arrow, shows you similarly the increased visibility of the choroid due to the loss of the overlying RPE and neurosensory retina. The second form of advanced AMD is the development of a choroidal neovascular membrane. There are several types of CNV. Type 1 CNV involves the formation of abnormal blood vessels that originate in the choroid, extend through Brooks membrane, but do not extend above the RPE. They, what we like to say, lay low. Type 1 membranes may be associated with AMD, however, they may also develop as a result of other pathologic processes such as central serous. On OCT, you will find an irregular PED with a heterogeneous internal reflectivity indicating the fibrovascular nature of the PED. Note on this slide that the RPE is here and the abnormal area of reflectivity is below the level of the RPE, making it occult in nature. 
Here's another example of an occult membrane. The orange arrow is showing you the RPE, and again, the abnormal area of hyperreflectivity, or the abnormal PED, is below the level of the RPE. The red arrow is pointing to a pocket of serous fluid. Whenever you have serous fluid adjacent to an irregular suspicious PED, you must always rule out the presence of CNV. Here's another example of a large fibrovascular PED with two adjacent areas of serous fluid, both nasal and temporal. In situations like this, where you want to rule out CNV, we should use OCT and geography. OCT and geography is a new technology that allows for visualization of the retinal and cruttal vasculature. Essentially, you can see on this frame how each part of the retina is fed by a distinct area of vasculature. In order to rule out choroidal neovascular membranes, we want to look at the two outer angiograms, RPE down to choroid. This is important because when you're delineating a stage 1 or a type 1 choroidal neovascular membrane from a type 2, it's going to affect these slabs differently. Let's move on and discuss how. In a type 1 membrane, I mentioned before that the abnormal vasculature originates in the choroid. Thus, you can see that this abnormal frond of tissue is originating in the choroidal slab. However, remember from my previous slides that an abnormal membrane for, as a result of a type 1 membrane will not go above the RPE. Thus, it should not penetrate through the avascular or outer retinal slab. This slab should remain dark. The next type of CNV is a type 2 or classic CNV. A classic CNV will originate in the choroid as did type 1, however it will extend through the subretinal space and pass through the RPE. On OCT, a type 2 CNV will appear as a subretinal hyperreflective material as you can see here. It is above the level of the RPE. Type 2 CNV is common in exudative AMD as well as in patients with acquired defects in their RPE, such as pathological myopia. On this slide, again, you can locate the RPE and you can notice that the area of abnormal hyperreflectivity is above the level of the RPE. Here's another example of a patient with a type 2 membrane. Always locate your RPE first, trace it along, and look for the abnormal area of activity. Again, in this case, it is above the level of the RPE, making it a type 2 membrane. Just as we mentioned the use of angiography for type 1, it's also extremely useful to identify membranes in type 2. Again, the hypervisible area or net is going to originate in the choriocapillaris slab or angiogram. However, with the case of a type 2, remember that it's going to go above the level of the RPE, thus the outer retinal or avascular slab is going to be affected as well. This is a nice way to differentiate between the two membranes and also to solidify a diagnosis when you're not sure. I mentioned before that patients that have a susceptible RP Brooks complex, such as a patient with high myopia, are prone to developing choroidal neovascular membranes. This is a patient that has high myopia or degenerative myopia and has developed a type 2 CNV, which you can see right here on the bottom of the pointed blue arrows. A disciform scar represents the end stage of a CNV lesion. Fibrovascular tissue develops within Brooks membrane in the subretinal space and in the subretinal RPE space. The RPE becomes thickened in the area of scarring and damage occurs to the photoreceptors. On OCT, a disciform scar appears as a hyperreflective area, which you can see here, this large red area, with distinct borders underneath the neurosensory retina. In this slide, you can see the yellow arrow pointing, or the orange arrow pointing to the neurosensory retina, and the red arrow pointing to the large disciform scar. You can see that there is a complete loss of the outer retinal layers and photoreceptors above the scar. Cystic spaces, which you can see right here by this hyporeflective area, occur in the inner retina due to the degenerative changes occurring throughout the retina. I hope that you found this webinar helpful in understanding Drusen, and in particular AMD and its sequelae. I hope to see you at future webinars 
on discussing more topics in advanced OCT interpretation.